Thank you, Shun, for the opportunity to be here to let all of you know about an important issue that impacts homeowners, property owners, and realtors in Los Angeles County. And I have to tell you, we've gone out to the LA County Boards of Realtors downtown, we've been to the one in the South Bay, La Cunada, Cerritos, but this is where everybody's at. <laughs> this must be the best chapter in all of the state. It's good to see all of you. Anyway, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Kayla. California Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse is the only grassroots movement pushing for legal reform here in California. We have about 50,000 supporters statewide, most of whom are small business owners and concerned citizens who believe legal reform is one way to turn California's economy around and create jobs. According to the economic consulting group called NARA, one tort reform in California would create as many as 115,000 to 320,000 jobs right here in our state. Too many? Yeah. <laughs> I won't be so thumb happy. <laughs> anyway, back in November 2013, Kayla celebrated its uh, 20th anniversary. And at the time, we had invited Andy Puster, the CEO of Carl's Jr. Restaurants, to be our featured speaker. And we were so excited that he agreed to be our speaker because he is on the record as saying California needs to do everything it can to change its legal environment so our California businesses can be in business grow their business, and be the job creators they were meant to be. In his conversation with us, he shared how it's much easier for him to open up new restaurants in Texas, China, or Siberia than it is in Los Angeles, California. Another man that I like to cite, his name is Joe Granich. And Joe has a moving company in Irvine. And for the last 30 years, he's been moving businesses from California in and out of California. But for the last 20 years, he's noticed he's really just moving those businesses out of California. So he decided to survey those businesses and release those survey results to the media as to why California businesses are leaving California for more business-friendly states. And time and time again, it's because of our high taxes, burdensome regulations, and a legal environment stacked against business. Well, that's why almost every year, more than one million lawsuits are filed in California. But that doesn't take into account the demand letters, letters our business owners receive without a lawsuit that forces them to spend thousands of dollars for issues of technical non-compliance. Nobody's ever heard. I know you know about the abuse of the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's rampant. But that's where our small business owners are sued up to $1,000 to $4,000 for issue of technical noncompliance. They might not have the parking lot sign, the bathroom mirror might be too high, the toilet is too low. Are they given the chance or are they notified that they might need to improve these signs and bathroom? Of course not. Are they given the chance to fix the problem? Of course not. Are they sued for $1,000 to $4,000 for not being in technical noncompliance? You better believe it. And those three issues are $12,000 right there. These are the types of abuses that our small business owners face. Another one in California is the abuse of Proposition 65, which was an initiative passed by voters back in 1986. It was called the California Safe Drinking Water and Environmental Quality Act. And again, I know you've seen the sign. If a business doesn't have the sign, chemicals used in this business may cause cancer or reproductive harm. If they don't have that sign on the wall, they're sued for $2,500 a day for not having that sign. Are they notified within three days, a week, or a month that they might need to get that sign? Of course not. They wait a year. The average settlement for not having your $40 sign is anywhere between $60,000 to $80,000. At our press conference, you can see the picture there. We had a big press conference on the steps of the state capitol back in March. And one of our business owners from Bakersfield stepped forward. And he shared his experience with an abusive wage and hour violation. 
You see, it didn't matter that he paid his employees, that he paid his employees on time, that that check cleared the bank. What mattered was is because that check stub didn't have a beginning date and an end date on the check stub. So he was sued for every employee, for every pay period that didn't have a beginning date and an end date on the check stub. It was a class action lawsuit that cost several thousand dollars. All these types of abusive cases or examples stem here in California from what they call the Private Attorney General Act, where California allows private people at the local level to sue on behalf of the state. And sometimes, because it's so loose like that, abuse happens in our business owner space, these types of abuses. But the type of lawsuit I want to share with you today talks about how private contingency fee attorneys have teamed up with municipalities. You see, they went to local governments and they said, look, we have a solution. But the issue is, they didn't really have a problem. But should this lawsuit move forward, like I mentioned before, it will impact every homeowner and property owner and realtor and resident in Los Angeles County. And it talks about lead paint and a whole class of houses built before 1981 who could potentially now be labeled a public nuisance. This could happen to approximately 3.8 million homeowners in 10 municipalities in California. And if it does move forward, according to the board, according to the president of the board of the LA County Board of Realtors, it will precipitate the worst housing plunge since 2007. So let me tell you the, the history. It goes back to the late 1890s and early 1900s when paint manufacturers were using lead pigment in paint. And at the time, the federal government encouraged the use of lead pigment in paint because having the lead pigment in paint made it easy to clean things. You could wipe things off, the floor, the furniture, the walls, and they considered that by having it easy to clean, it would help prevent the transmission of disease like tuberculosis. But as the science of lead pigment evolved, paint manufacturers took it upon themselves to start working with public health officials to remove the lead pigment in paint, and by 1978, the federal government had banned the lead pigment in paint altogether. But knowing this, the private contingency fee attorney saw an opportunity. They saw an opportunity to go back and sue paint manufacturers for the paint that they made in the late 1890s and early 1900s. And they did, and they sued them under product liability laws, and they lost every time. But they came back, and they came up with a new strategy, and they said, this time, we're gonna sue them under public nuisance laws. Much easier to get through. You know, they're mostly used for when an airplane flies over a neighborhood, or if you live next to a city or a community where there's a slaughterhouse and it smells, that's another example of a public nuisance case. So they did that. And they went to 10 municipalities and they encouraged them, to seduce them actually, to join with them in this lead paint lawsuit. And they said, look, it's not gonna cost you anything, you don't have to do anything, we're private contingency fee attorneys, and if we win, you win big money for your government coffers. So they began suing. They sued in seven jurisdictions, in front of seven judges, seven juries, seven times, and they lost every time. As a matter of fact, every decision came back that said suing paint manufacturers with this type of public nuisance law doesn't make any legal sense. One of the judges from New Jersey in her decision actually wrote out that using public nuisance laws for this type of case really stretches beyond the recognition of the definition of a public nuisance law. But then they came to California. And when they came to California, the case was heard in front of one judge, in front of one jurisdiction. He deemed 3.8 million houses a public nuisance in 10 municipalities. He then demanded that the paint manufacturers have to pay $1.1 billion to help pay for the inspection, abatement, and remediation for these homes. The problem is, is that when the judge made his decision, he prioritized any property that had 10 violations against it or more. 
a slumlord now is going to get first opportunity to get this money. And you guys probably know a lot better than I do, but it's really not that easy to come in and fix a place for lead paint. You just don't paint on top of it. If the place is in bad shape, you might have to remove the roof, change the pipes, change the window, cover the soil. This all gets very expensive. And with 3.0 million homes, that money is going to go right away. The judge in his decision also failed to recognize that the state of California has a very successful lead abatement program. And since the program began, child blood lead levels have dropped to half a percent. So what is the impact of this going to be? If you're a homeowner and your house is labeled a public nuisance, its property values are going to fall. It's going to make it very difficult to rent or to sell. If you're a realtor, you probably can tell me better. It's going to be easier to sell something that's not labeled a public nuisance. So if you have all these houses and you can't sell them, then what happens to title insurance companies? They're not able to write new titles for houses. Insurance companies can't sell new homeowner insurance. Banks, mortgage companies can't give out new loans. And did I say that if property values fall, that means city and county governments will have less money to spend on essential public services, and the burden of this could fall on the taxpayer. We also believe that the burden of this could fall on the homeowner. The, phone, the homeowner might have to figure out if they are on that public nuisance list and take it upon themselves with their own money to have it inspected, remediated, and abated at their own cost to have it removed from that public nuisance list. So the bottom line to all of this then is we're having a hard time really figuring out who the real winners are in this case. Again, it's the people who try to abuse the laws for their own personal gain. So California Citizens Against Lost Abuses here, we're asking that you join with us and ask the county, the Board of Supervisors, important questions. Have them start thinking about this and the impact it will have here in LA County. Ask them who is going to administer this program at the county. Who is going to deem those houses a public nuisance? Where are they going to deem those houses a public nuisance? And what is the cost to taxpayers going to be? We also ask that maybe you would sign the sign-in sheet if you want to stay connected with California Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse and our issues and join with us in writing letters to the editor or blogs or meeting with legislators. Thank you very much.